On his resurrection, Jesus established his credentials as Savior and Lord. By his rising from the dead, he showed that he had conquered sin and death and Satan. He showed that death has lost its sting, its power to hurt us. Death is now powerless to separate us from God's love. Where death once opened the door to hell, it now serves God's purpose by opening for us the door to heaven. And Christ's resurrection gives us hope of our own resurrection on the last day when our bodies will be changed or raised in glory. So the temporal death of believers at which ends our earthly life is still a consequence of sin. It is no longer a punishment of sin. Christ's victory has seen to that. While we still die, death's curse has been taken away, for there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus has made death precious by making it the entranceway into eternal life with him. Death has become for the believer a transition from a spiritual life of faith and hope into an eternal life of perfect bliss and happiness with God, free of all sin sickness, and sorrow. Someone has said, death is not the end, it is the beginning. Not a goal, but a gate. Not a tragedy, but a triumph. Not a going away, but a coming home. And the sorrow at the departure is more than compensated by the glad welcome on the other side. That's why our hymns on this day carry a sense of I need to make clear that such a description applies only when we're talking about the death of God's saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, the John Joel. It's not that way for everyone, it's only for his saints. When speaking of saints, we might think of those martyrs who went to their deaths with great courage during times of persecution. And rightfully so. Perhaps we conjure up images of someone who seldom if ever sins. But we would be wrong. Even the most saintly person among us is far from perfect. Martyrs included. The Bible is just when it tells us that all sins fall short of the glory of God. Perhaps you've noticed when attending some funeral services that you hear little or no loss. Little or nothing is made of the fact that the person was a sinner. It's the good deeds of the person that are extolled while Jesus takes a back seat. But if the person wasn't a sinner, he or she didn't need a savior. And without a savior, there can be no good deeds. Neither your good deeds or my good deeds can ever make up for our faults. A person is a saint for one reason and one reason only, because he or she has had faith in Jesus. That's the only way that any of us ever become saints. Not by anything that we do to earn it or deserve it, but solely by the grace of God through faith. Faith which our gracious God works in our hearts through the faith creating and faith sustaining power of the gospel. The gospel pronounced in absolution, proclaimed from the pulpit, distributed at the altar. God's saints are those who repent of their sins and put their trust in Jesus for forgiveness. They believe that he died and rose again. More than that, they believe that he died and rose again for them. Saints believe that the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses them from all sin. That God is faithful and just to forgive all their sins and to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. In the 
picturesque words of today's first lesson. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. There's no question in my mind that you and I are sinners, guilty of sin in thought, word, and deed. That's not the final word, however. Yes, we are sinners, but by the grace of God, we are what? Forgiven sinners. One of his saints is holy. Forgiven. Let that word sink in. Forgiven. Makes a person want to wonder what? Say thank you, Jesus. Yes, but that's just the beginning. Those who are forgiven, made saints, want now to live holy lives in the power that God's Holy Spirit gives them. In response to what Christ has done for us, because he has bought us and made us his own, we will use our bodies, all their powers, their skills, talents, and abilities, in God-honoring, God-pleasing, God-serving ways. With our bodies, we will strive to serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessing. Until we meet our call in heaven in perfection. For all of us, death will come at God's appointed time, even as it did for all the saints before us. And it will be precious in his sight if we too are putting our trust in Jesus. For those who refuse the forgiveness Christ earned by his obedience in death, death can only be something to be feared. For them it is the doorway that leads to the judgment seat of a righteous, a just judge. We must pass the sentence of condemnation. God's time of grace continues for us, us here. How much longer, we don't know. In order that we might put our trust in the salvation Jesus earned for us. With saints past and saints yet to come, we too can have the wonderful assurance that we are precious to the Lord. And I believe that's the message that God has for each of us to take with us today. All saints day. Yes, you are precious. You are precious to him in life. Because you are precious, he never takes his eyes off of you. His goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. Because of that, you can cast all your cares upon him. You can be assured of his love and forgiveness. You can receive strength in times of difficulty. Power to overcome temptation. Comfort and hope in the midst of life's sorrows. You could even remain faithful even to death. The harsh prospect that confronts many of our brothers and sisters in the faith who face persecution around the world. And only by God's grace spares us at this time. And you are precious to him in death. You can know for sure that when God God's call comes for you, you will enter heaven to meet with God and to join all God's saints who were precious in his sight. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Continue for Noni. Um, she wasn't able to go through with the procedure to get rid of the kidney stones, and maybe there's a hope that she will yet be able to try to try that one again. I, I hope so that she, she can get released today and her pancreatitis. Even Rudolph, with her health concerns, Mr. 
Michelle Mantle, uh, together with uh, Jeffrey Long, the SNAP as well as Eileen Gracie, uh, we handle those at this time. And uh, we will also remember that this too is uh, the National Election Day. Mighty and eternal God, we remember before you the saints and martyrs of every generation who trusted in you in the face of terror and threat. Grant that when facing persecution and trial in our own day, we may be steadfast in faith. Deliver those whom you have washed in baptism, granting the new life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty and eternal God, you established the church and have granted her your aid and protection through these many years. Continue to pour out upon us your spirit and grace that we may accomplish your bidding and proclaim your saving name to every corner of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Your Mighty and eternal God, we beg your grace that our lives may be ordered by your commands, and we ask you to bless those who govern us in your name. Bless our president, the Congress, our governor, the legislature, and all local officials that, pursuing the path of justice, they may act with humility and honor for the good of all people. Give wisdom to all who vote this week, and bless its result, that our nation may elect our leaders peacefully and orderly. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty and eternal God, we rejoice that you have rescued us from the power of death and raised us in Christ to dwell with you in everlasting life. Give to those who grieve the comfort of the promise of the resurrection of the dead and eternal life, and bestow your peace upon the dying that they may fall asleep here and awaken in your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty and eternal God, you have made us your children and you continue to guard us as your own possession. According to your will, give healing to the sick, calm to the troubled in mind, and patience to those facing sorrow and struggle. Give health and peace to our nation. Place your protection over those who serve us in the health care field. And bless the efforts of those who are working, working diligently to provide vaccines and therapeutics to counter the COVID-19 pandemic and other diseases. Give aid to those who have experienced the devastation of fires and hurricanes, and keep those who respond to these disasters safe. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Mighty and eternal God, show forth your <coughs> kindness to the poor and your compassion to those who suffer injustice. Deliver us from the scourge of racism and prejudice, and help us to acknowledge our common life from your creative power and our common redemption in Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Mighty and eternal God, bring us to that day when every tear shall be wiped from our eyes and we shall hunger and thirst no more. Knowing you now by faith, we yearn for the day when we shall know you face to face. Until the dawn of that eternal day, keep us in your faith and fear through our good shepherd and Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Mighty and eternal God, we are unworthy of all your blessings and do not deserve the mercies due every morning of our earthly life. Give us the will and desire to care responsibly for all that you have entrusted to us and to be generous with those in need and for the support of your church and the work of your kingdom. Accept the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving from our lips and the tithes and offerings we bring this day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 